my fourth piece of advice, contrary to what Dan said, um, I think that PowerPoint is the standard. It is sort of like going to a haiku contest and saying, I'm not going to be limited by 575, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, if you're going to pitch to a VC, you're going to use PowerPoint. I'm sorry. And so it's, it, I've had cases where people say, I don't need PowerPoint. And so, and they think they're being bold and dynamic and different. And they still give a piece of shit presentation. <laughs> so at least with PowerPoint, you give a piece of shit presentation that has some structure to it. So I know what shit is coming. Um, <laughs> now, uh, I, I, will, I will give you what I consider, you know, I, I have this thing called Meniere's disease. And Meniere's disease has three symptoms. Tinnitus, which is constant ringing hearing loss, and also sporadic attacks of vertigo. There are many theories about what causes Meniere's. Uh, excessive caffeine, excessive alcohol, excessive stress, uh, and excessive salt, which basically I just described my lifestyle. <laughs> and I have another theory, that I am as a, I'm a VC, and as a VC, I listen to dozens of pitches. And these pitches all have 60 slides for 60-minute meeting. They all say they have a proven team because they worked at PetSmart, so they know how to do selling pet food at home. Uh, online, I mean. Um, they're using Visual Basic, so that's patent pending, curve jumping, you know, Nobel Prize winning technology. And, um, and so, you know, we get pitches that want to build geodesic domes over LA. We got a pitch for buying Israel to make it into an amusement park. Um, and so, the reason why I think I have Meniere's disease is not salt, not alcohol, not stress, and not caffeine. It's because I listen to this crap all the time. So is it any wonder that there's a ringing in my head, I'm going deaf, and I get dizzy? It's because of the crap I hear. So the cure or prevent an epidemic of Meniere's, I've, came up, I've come up with the 10, 20, 30 rule of PowerPoint, right? So I believe that the optimal PowerPoint presentation has 10 slides. You can give those 10 slides in 20 minutes. You may have a 60-minute meeting, but 95% of you are using Windows, so you need 40 minutes to hook it up to the projector. Okay? <laughs> so 10 slides. 20 minutes, and the smallest font you should use is 30 points. 30 points because it forces you to put the essence of what you want to say on the slide. If you use 8, 10, or 12, you will use a lot of text. When you use a lot of text, it signals to the audience that you have not rehearsed enough. When you start reading your text, the audience is then going to conclude one slide into your presentation, this is a bozo. This bozo is reading the slides. This, role, this bozo was reading the slides verbatim, in fact. And I can read silently to myself his slides faster than he can read orally. So I'll just read ahead. There is no value add, and you will lose your audience. If you think that this 30 part is too dogmatic, then I will tell you a rule of thumb. The rule of thumb is find out who the oldest VC will be in the room. Divide his or her age by two. Most of the time, you're pitching to 60-year-old VCs. 60 divided by 2 is 30, hence the 30-point font. Now, VCs are getting younger and younger. Someday, you may be at a VC firm, and you're pitching to a 16-year-old. God bless you. Use the 8-point font. Okay? <laughs> but until that day, 30-point font. Now, um, Dan, Dan did not want to name the sections that should be in a PowerPoint presentation. And I, I will do that for you, OK? So here are the 10 slides. The first slide is the title slide. People make a mistake right there at the first slide. They put their company name, but not their contact, email address, phone number, and address. I don't know why. Because God forbid they would really be interested in you, and they forget how to get in touch with you, and they look at your PowerPoint deck, and there's no information, OK? The title slide. The problem slide, what pain are you solving? The next slide is the solution slide, how are you solving that pain? The fourth slide is your business model, how are you make money surviving, uh, solving that pain? The fifth slide is the underlying magic. And this is where most people trip up because they say they have patent pending, curve jumping, paradigm shifting, new way to use Google AdSense to optimize placement of you know, banners which is all bullshit, right? But so to the extent possible, if there is really underlying magic, and it doesn't have to be just technology, it could be that you were the VP of sales of Oracle, and you're quitting, and you're starting an enterprise database company. The underlying magic is you have this immediate 
incredible database in your head of people who have bought Oracle databases. That could be underlying magic. Uh, the sixth slide is the marketing and sales. Exactly how will you go to market? And here people trip themselves up because everybody says we're going to be viral and we're going to use word of mouth. And, and they say that as if that's an answer. That's not an answer. That opens up more questions because virality is primarily based on luck. And word of mouth is also based on luck. So when you say we're viral because you heard Steve Jervison say it in another panel, um, you're basically saying we have no clue. Right? So <laughs> it needs to be better structured than we have no clue. Uh, the next slide is the competition slide. Uh, most people create a matrix. They have all their competition. They have all the qualities. And their column is the one that's all that's checked off. Uh, and that's just the way it is. I think that's a bad way to do it because everybody does it that way. I think a much better way to do it, much simpler, is you create a, a slide that says, this is what we can do that they cannot do. And this is what we cannot do and they can do. You might ask, why put the second section? You're admitting holes. You're admitting weaknesses. You're doing that because you want to show that you're honest. And so you have an honest appraisal of your business so that if you're not caught in a lie, when people assume, when people get the feeling that you're an honest person, when you say that you have something, they will really believe you. If you, when you don't have something, you really say you don't have it. So it is to be honest and to develop the impression, hopefully the reality, that you are honest, that you should admit your weaknesses as opposed to try to gloss them over. So that's the competitive slide. Um, the next slide is the team slide. Um, I differ with most VCs. Most VCs say they invest in teams. Um, I think that's bullshit because the only way you know that a team is great is you declare victory five years from now, right? So the way it works in the venture capital business is you make 20 investments. One, God help you, becomes a Google or a Yahoo or Cisco and Apple. At that point, you say, I knew Larry and Sergey was a great team. I knew Eric Schmidt would step up to the plate. I knew that Pierre Amidyar would get a Meg Whitman. I knew they had promising technology. I knew they had a solid business model. Yeah, lots of people want to buy used, broken HP printers on the internet. I knew that as soon as I met Pierre, right? 